When did math start to get so scary for all of you? I asked it to one of my students. She's a smart girl but hates doing math. She said, Ma'am, math was all fun when it was just numbers. It all started going bad in the letters and third mind. First it was only English and then came Greek and now math and the least all some language. I don't understand. Today we are going to look into one such topic which has scared most of you from that time it was introduced to all of us in class. Today let us try to understand the mystery called integration. Math is all around us and it becomes really interesting when we use things around us to understand math. So, to conquer this not so Herculean task, let us go to a better location. Wouldn't it be amazing if we could understand the complex, frightening topic called integration in the kitchen? Say, so I want to find the volume of this carrot. But this carrot does not have a regular shape. And we don't know a formula to find volume. The thickness of this carrot also keeps changing. We know that if we cut this carrot into smaller pieces, the sum of volume of each piece will give you the volume of the entire carrot. But we still don't have a solution here. Each shape is different and we still don't know how to find volume of each piece. If we continue to slice this carrot into finer pieces, we end up having a cylinder of very small height. And we know how to find the volume of a cylinder. Since we have cut all the pieces such a finely that we can assume that each piece has a similar volume. So, if we find the volume of one cylinder and multiply it with the number of pieces, we get the volume of this carrot which was essentially not a cylinder. So even though it is not a formal definition, I would like to think that integration is just repeated addition of an infinitely small pieces to get a big object. You know how they say, Necessity is the mother of all inventions. It was one such necessity that led to the invention of calculus and integration. Indian mathematicians like Bhaskara and Mathava and later Archimedes and other Babylonian mathematicians are known to have used some primitive form of calculus. However, credit of inventing calculus as we know it today, goes to Newton and Leibniz. When German astronomer Johannes Kepler stated a line that connects a planet to the sun sweeps equal area in equal intervals of time, Newton wanted to calculate the area swept by the planet. This necessity is what gave birth to integration. If we use our carrot example to explain how Newton found the area, say our object moves an irregular fixed path. For instance, let our object move according to the function log x square plus x. The path will be something like this. 
So we have to find the area swept when the object move from A to B. Again, this is an irregular shape and we don't have any formula to find the area. So we divide it into a smaller shape. We have already learned how to find the area of rectangle. So let us divide this shape into smaller rectangle. The breadth is a very small value dx. It was Levinas who introduced us to the notation we use in integration theory. So this breadth dx is what we call differential. The length at any point of the rectangle is log x square plus x. So the area of this rectangle is length into breadth or log x square plus x into dx. To find the total area, we have to add up the area of all individual rectangles. This is done by this symbol called sum. In this video, we have just tried to understand the concept behind integration. Add up infinitely small pieces to make up the big shape. How to solve this particular integral and other rules of integration we shall study later. We will soon be coming up with the video to explain how differentiation works. So till then, let's celebrate the math around us. Happy learning.